We know that shopping online can be a confusing and sometimes daunting task, and sometimes all you want to do is talk to a human being. Well, our family-run customer service team are on call 24-7. They're full of friendly, warm-hearted individuals, all trained to make your shopping experience as easy and as enjoyable as possible. And not only will they take your order, they will also help and guide you on your shopping journey so you never miss out. Are you a fan of Sewing Street and Yarn Lane? Why not join our growing Facebook fans pages? Just search Sewing Street Fans and Yarn Lane TV Fans on Facebook and click Join Group. It's that simple. Never miss out on the latest news and updates from our presenters and guest designers, special offers and plenty of chat with your fellow fans. Share photos of your makes, ask for advice, interact with your favourite guests and presenters and be a part of the ever-growing sewing and yarn community. See you there! Follow Sewing Street and Yarn Lane on Facebook and Instagram to keep up to date with what's coming up on the show, as well as being the first to know about our amazing offers. Get involved with our competitions that are exclusive to social media. And pick up some top tips from us too. In need of a crafting fix... There are so many ways you can watch Sewing Street and Yarn Lane. Sewing Street is live from 8am to 1pm every day on Freeview 72 and Sky 670. Alternatively, if you want to watch us on a tablet or on the move, you can tune in on our YouTube channel, the Sewing Street app, or the websites at www.sewingstreet.com and www.yarnlane.com. You can watch past shows on Sky 670 from 1pm every day, as well as our YouTube channel, the app, and our website. Yarn Lane is on from 12pm to 1pm. Visit our programme guide to find out when and what's on. So you never have to spend a minute without us. Have you heard about all of the different ways you can shop with Sewing Street and Yarn Lane? You can either shop on our websites, sewingstreet.com and yarnlane.com. You can also order by phone by calling our friendly UK customer service team. For Sewing Street, call 0800 001 4433. And for Yarn Lane, call 0800 4700 600. And don't forget about the Sewing Street app. Here you can shop all of the Sewing Street products as well as watch the live shows from anywhere. You can download the app onto your smartphone or your tablet by simply searching Sewing Street in your app store. And one final thing, no matter how many times you check out on Sewing Street or Yarn Lane in one day, you will only pay one postage and packaging. Happy shopping! Missed the live show? Don't worry, we recorded it for you. Never miss out on your favourite presenters, guests and makes ever again. Head on over to our YouTube pages to watch back the day's live show and enjoy your favourite demos over and over again. We also have lots of great content exclusive to our YouTube pages, such as product demonstrations, troubleshooting videos and so much more. Subscribe and turn on the bell notification so you never miss a show or video ever again. Hello, hello, hello. Welcome to Yarn Lane. I am so excited about today's show. I've been giddy about this all day since I saw yesterday the gorgeous, cute projects that we've got. Welcome to Yarn Lane. If you've never joined us before, this is where we are all about all gorgeous things. Yarn and knitting and crochet and lovely soft crafts. Um, we've got an absolutely wonderful show today. Uh, we're all about crochet today all about crochet and all about tea cozies. Um, uh, some of my favourite things in there, um, the gorgeous yarns, the gorgeous motifs and of course tea and anything with tea, I am there. Our teapots unfortunately are empty but they are covered with, oh my goodness, the most adorable crocheted cozies. This is our sheep who's available in three different colours 
absolutely full of personality and the pattern can be adapted to fit basically any size teapot. So rather than making your tea cosy and then finding a teapot that fits it, you can start with the teapot that you already have uh, and make a tea cosy that fits. Our wonderful guest Helen is going to show us how to do exactly that. Now then, all of our kits are put together by Helen Ingram. Uh, they come in the most beautiful bag, so it's a beautiful gift to yourself, but it's also instantly giftable to someone else. Here they are, it's woolly chic. Beautiful. This is the Hearts and Flowers Tea Cozy. The Hearts and Flowers Crochet Tea Cozy Kit. This is it right here, and it is absolutely sumptuous. Helen, I love it, love the 3D nature. Oh, look, those are really firm. I couldn't help but squeeze. Sorry, that's just my natural, <laughs> just squeeze things. <laughs> uh, isn't that gorgeous though? Absolutely beautiful, crocheted in that beautiful, natural kind of ecru adaptable to fit pretty much any size teapot and then those embellishments the rich purple flowers and those big red hearts this has got a little bit of uh, uh, um, Alice tea party vibe for me the purple and red are you getting that and I love the little bit of stitch detail as well this is multi-skill looks complicated Helen is it going to be difficult to make no very very easy very very easy <laughs> you heard it from the maestro I'm going to pop that to one side I've got my lovely kit here I'm saying mine like I'm going to take it home I want to take it home um I always think most importantly instructions um these look wonderfully detailed oh yes fantastic Oh, different colour versions as well, options. Ah, and also look at this, look at this. Ways that you could use your hearts for other things as well. Extra value and a little biography. Mm. I'm going to read that. <laughs> <laughs> so you get your instructions and then inside the kit itself. Now what I love about uh, Helen's kits are real quality ingredients let's call them ingredients real quality components beautiful beautiful things inside that is delicious i love a cake of yeah. yarn yeah. there's something very special isn't there about a cake of yarn it's just beautiful oh you've included a crochet hook mm -hmm. now i wasn't expecting that i wasn't expecting that and that's a real added bonus because you might be buying this kit or someone in your family or a friend who's never crocheted before and you want to introduce them to the wonderful joy of crochet um, and then also inside there you've got your your stuffing is this yeah. roving this is fleece no it's not it, oh it, it's it made, felt like it no it's made from recycled plastic bottles oh fantastic <laughs> fantastic so you've got your recycled plastic bottle uh, filling there uh, plenty in there for making your um, hearts and flowers crochet tea cozy. It's a full kit, everything you need, including all your instructions and a calico bag to keep it in. $25.99, that is a brilliant price. You're getting everything there, even down to the crochet hook. I'm gonna pop everything carefully back inside so that it's all ready for me to take <laughs> at the end. That is lovely. And of course, you're getting those wonderful instructions too. Super giftable, that one. Love it. Now, next up, we've got the Christmas pudding. Very timely, Helen, because we've been having a Christmas hour this morning. Okay. So I've already been getting my Christmas groove on. Um, now is the time, isn't it? It is. Yeah. Time to make. Yeah. No good waiting until Christmas Eve. <laughs> um, get your Christmas pudding. How cute is that? <laughs> that is absolutely adorable how many teapots do you own lots lots yeah that's all you're prepared to say <laughs> yeah lots yeah you're talking to a fellow tea addict here so yeah. i'm not judging um that is absolutely lovely shown on a small teapot here but as i mentioned at the start of the show helen's going to talk us through how to really use the pattern as a guide to then create 
any size tea cozy. So you've got the teapot already, you want to make a tea cozy to fit it, this kit's going to do exactly that job. I um, love the fact that this is actually like a real thing. Um, you've got inside your kit your full instructions, you've got your crochet hook, I'm expecting that now you see, mm -hmm. I know you put that in there, you've got your cream for the top of the tea cozy, for the cream or for the brandy sauce maybe <laughs> that you put or your, the rum sauce that you put on top, you've got a couple of shades, you've got some green there for the holly leaves and also red for the berries. And then you've also got some felt. What do I need felt for? So just in case people wanted to make the holly leaves out of felt oh, and well instead of crochet, so you could have an option. So I either cut them out and sew them on or crochet them. Well, that is very generous. What a great idea. Thanks, <laughs> Helen. <laughs> That's Helen Ingram, by the way, everyone. <laughs> the amazing designer. Um, from Woolly Chic and then you've got this lovely, now I'm particularly taken with this brow because I love the natural colour yeah. of wool straight from the sheep. What kind of sheep? So that is a, from a Jacob sheep, so that's completely natural, undyed and it is a nice rich sort of black brown. Um, ideal for Christmas pudding colour. It's multi-tonal isn't it? Is, it? it is, it is. Really yeah. gorgeous, so you get those different effects when it's crocheted or knitted up. Um, and that's the colour of the actual Jacob sheep isn't it? Is. It is, In yes. parts. Yes. They're a bit mottled aren't they? Yes, yeah. Kind that's of... what it comes out as when they sort of spin it all together. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, Jacob sheep, one of the oldest breeds as well I think aren't they? Yeah, they are. They're mentioned yeah. in the Bible. Ooh, or is know. that where the Jacob name comes from? I've got a feeling. Hmm. Oh, I love that. I absolutely love that. Look at the colours, the way they work, that natural colouring of the Jacob sheep. Um, just brilliant for the actual Christmas pudding itself. And then you've got the natural um, cream, again, for the top, for the brandy sauce or the rum sauce. And then you've got two options for your holly leaves. You can either crochet them, as Helen has, and then some crochet berries, or you've also got a piece of felt that you could cut uh, the holly leaves out of. Do we get a template inside for holly leaves? No. No, you can cut your own. You can do that. Go freestyle. Yeah, freestyle it. <laughs> freestyle it. I used to be a primary school teacher and um, Chil adults don't struggle, but uh, children struggle with the concept oh. of, of the holly leaf, how to draw it. And we used to get mm. some corkers. Um, <laughs> uh, I've done them myself, certainly. Um, <laughs> that is lovely. That's your Christmas pudding kit, twenty three ninety nine for that. Now, um, all the details are there to make your beautiful Christmas pudding tea cosy and I think that's something you're going to bring out year after year after year that's going to become a family heirloom isn't it now the cat comes next now Helen cat, you've yeah. got the cat yeah. over there talk us through it so <laughs> so this this cat is um, the reason why I've got hold of it and yeah. not you Stuart is because uh, at the moment it's not got a tail but uh, I'm going to demonstrate how to how to crochet the the tail and this is made with a crocheted fur stitch which mm. is very um, which is very similar to the loop stitch which the um, the sheep so the sheep have got a loop stitch and this is a, a crochet fur stitch and when I demonstrate how to do both of the stitches you'll see that they're just exactly the same but this one's just cut at the top of the loop oh. and then just like with a pom-pom yep. you can then just sort of give it a haircut <laughs> and trim it into into shape so um, don't try that if you've got a cat at home a real cat you can't give them a haircut <laughs> no. but Helen's <laughs> Brilliant pattern. You can give a haircut. I need to give a haircut at the end. Yeah. So, um, so that's why I've got the the cat on. Uh, on Look the at all table. the personality in the face. Yeah. It's, it's just brilliant, yeah. isn't it? <laughs> Absolutely great fun. Twenty three ninety nine for your woolly chic black and white cat crochet tea cozy kit. Are you a cat lover? Do you have a cat lover in the family? What about you, Helen? Yeah, I've got two black and white cats, and uh, yeah, so uh, modelled on. 
Well, you could, the, the nice thing about the pattern is that, that it comes with the, the um, black brown yarn and some white yarn. So if you have got a, a, like a tuxedo cat like, like we have at home, you could actually do a sort of white stripe down uh, you know, under the chin on one side. You could side. adapt it. So you it. could adapt it to make it look like your cat at home. Love so that. Did you call it a tuxedo cat? A tuxedo cat, cat. Oh, yeah. Oh, is that what they're called? A black uh, Yeah, because they look like they're all dressed up for dinner, you see. <laughs> <so>. <laughs> I love that. Like, love like that. the Felix cat, you know, I on the adverts. I want a tuxedo uh, adverts. cat. Now. Yeah. <laughs> I've got um, a Berman, a blue, oh. blue point Berman, and she's 18 years old, oh. called Mrs. Mills. Is she fluffy? She is very fluffy. Oh. Kind of cream all over, like a Siamese, um, uh, colourings, uh -huh. so colour pointed yes, yeah. blue, legs, tail and face, um, but long haired oh. and the most beautiful blue eyes. So you could really adapt could. Helen's pattern and of course you've got the yarn to make the black and white version and it's a lovely, again, that lovely browny black yarn. Um, plus cream and pink to create the nose. Um, you've got a little bit of stuffing in there as well. Is that for the cheeks? No, yeah, that's just actually just to go into the head, into just to the bring head. the head forward. Gotcha. So, um, yeah. Love the cheeks, <laughs> love the cheeks. Um, but of course as well, don't forget that you'll have Helen's instructions, which you can use again. Um, and create more tea cozies. Um, brilliant value at only 23 99 You've also got your gorgeous woolly chic calico bag, um, eco-conscious and ethical, love mm -hmm. that, um, which of course you can keep your project in while you're working on it yeah. mm -hmm. and use it again and again. That's right, yep. Crochet hook included of course. Yeah. Now then, I think my favourite's the sheep because yeah. I've got sheep at home, we've got blue um, Bulwin Welsh Mountain Sheep, so a um, bit of a sheep geek me. These <laughs> are fab. <laughs> absolutely gorgeous three different color options the white the black and the gray i'm going to go through them in order we'll start with the white sheep because that's right at the top right here the personality that you've managed to capture um, in the face is just fabulous um nothing to see here <laughs> nothing to see here <laughs> i just love it absolutely brilliant um this is almost like um like a blue faced Lester or a Lincoln long wool, isn't it? Um, with the long sort of shaggy, shaggy fleece. Yeah. That's just brill. Um, now $27.99 for your kit. And Helen, you were saying earlier on that you can adapt the pattern to fit really any size tea cozy. Yes, yeah. So if you've got a teapot at home, then you you make it and try it on your teapot as you're making it so that it fits so that you increase where your teapot increases out from the bottom you decrease as your teapot comes in so you can completely adapt it to any shape or size uh, teapot because teapots come in all different shapes and sizes don't they there's no one standard kind of um you know, no. shape to a tea cozy, a teapot. No, you really don't. I mean, some of them really go very swiftly outwards, mm -hmm. don't they? They come yeah. right out and then back in again or up to a point. Some I've got one which is almost a globe shape. Yeah. Um, yeah. Which I find very difficult actually to find tea cozies to fit that shape. Uh -huh. Yes, well, you have to make one yourself. <laughs> I will. I will. Yeah. Well, only if you promise to teach me how to crochet properly. Okay. All right. Well, watch this demo then. <laughs> I will be watching with eagle eyes and also I must just say I was um, watching some of Helen's uh, videos YouTube videos last night uh, where she shares absolute basics um, and how to work each stitch how to you know a real complete beginner's guide to crochet which I think is a wonderful and very generous thing to do well, I love, I absolutely love crochet and I love sharing my passion with other people. And I really miss during lockdown teaching people face to face and doing workshops. So coming on Yarn Lane has been fantastic to be able to pass on the sort of knowledge and skills that I've learned and I can pass them on to other people, which is brilliant. Well, we think we're very lucky to have you oh, and we you. get your amazing <laughs> expertise, but also your amazing ideas. Um, now this is in natural, this is natural. And this one here, I called it the white sheet, but it's the natural. Now what you're getting in there is you're getting your pattern, um, same pattern for, for all three sheep. 
Um, I'm going to pop that down there. You get a really nice big uh, hank of yarn there. 100% um, Welsh wool, this one. You get your little bit of stuffing there that you'll need for the sheep's nose. Um, some blacky brown yarn uh, ready to do the features. And then you also get your crochet hook and it's all held together in this wonderful uh, calico bag as well. So that's the contents of your kit for the natural option, $27.99. Details are on screen now. Don't forget you can adapt this pattern to fit really any size or shape of tea cozy. Super useful. We've got a lovely message from Elaine who's in Kent saying hi Stuart and Helen love Helen's designs and that all her packaging is reusable in the bags or recyclable in the boxes and paper from Elaine oh. we love that too thank you Elaine thank you that's really lovely and um, yeah so I send out all the orders directly comes from from me um, yeah in these recyclable um, envelopes so everything is very ethical and environmentally friendly and for the Wonderful. natural um, sheep tea cozy kit you get a hundred grams of Welsh wool that comes from my family's sheep in Pembrokeshire and oh, Wales. Oh tell us more, tell us so, more. So yeah so um, my cousin now manages the the sheep farm um, and he has about 450 Paul Dorset and Ryland sheep. And the Rylands are cute. Oh, they're so cute. They have teddy bear faces. They, they are they are gorgeous. And uh, the and together the mixture of, of Paul Dorset and Ryland gives a very lovely sort of creamy off-white um, mm. colour yarn and it's very robust and it has great stitch definition. Will so, it keep our tea warm? And it is super warm. <laughs> it's super warm because that's the magical thing about wool is that it, it is great for, you know, warmth, but also great as insulation, yeah. as great that you can have duvets filled with wool. And so you've got that, the, the properties of, it also keeps you cool in the summer and warm in the winter. Yeah. So it's ideal for a tea cosy. So Wool is a, a wonder it, product, yeah. isn't it? It's like a miracle product. It is. Um, absolutely amazing. We don't use wool nearly enough as we should, um, but maybe all that will change. Well, as hopefully. we become more and more aware of the impact of, of some of the other materials and, you know, um, wool and British wool as well. I mean, just lovely. Now, hello. Hello. <laughs> this is a cutie. This is the great little grey sheep. A little grey sheep. <laughs> Absolutely adorable. Let me show you the colour of the yarn. This is the grey yarn that you're getting in this kit right here. Um, it's so lovely. That is absolutely gorgeous. And you're getting a hank of that grey yarn. You're getting your crochet hook. Do you put crochet hook in every single one of your kits? I do and I, I put a different crochet hook in my crochet kits for a reason. Um, and it's not just because most of my crochet hooks end up down the back of the sofa and I can never find uh -huh. the one mm -hmm. that I need, but also um, crochet, you, you have different sizes of crochet hook according to your project or according to the weight of yarn. So with this particular project, with the Tea Cozy, you want it to have a really firm um, fabric that you're producing. Right. So you need your stitches to be quite tight. So with a double knit yarn, you would probably have maybe a three and a half or a four millimeter mm -hmm. crochet hook. But I've gone down a hook size, so you get a three millimeter or a three and a half millimeter hook um, in the kits because you want your stitches to be very, very tight. Mm -hmm. you, you want your um, tea cosy to be as insulated as possible. Absolutely, no and, gaps. And with a loop stitch, you need those to be firm because you don't want the loops to start to unravel and then you'll have holes in your, in your tea cosy. Makes so, sense. So, um, so I do put uh, crochet hooks in my kits just in case people don't have that particular size hook that they'll need for the project. Well, there'll be nothing more frustrating than receiving your wonderful kit and then saying, but I don't have the right size hook. Yes. Um, but you've included everything you need, everything, including the stuffing that we need from recycled plastic bottles. Um, they're not going to end up floating in the sea. Recycled <laughs> uh, so that we can reuse them in something that really will become a family heirloom, something you'll keep, something with real character, a talking point at the table. Um, just the right size hook for creating a lovely dense 
tight insulating fabric there when you crochet it. Um, Jacob, a sheep yarn mm -hmm. here, um, creating that lovely grey. Wonderful thing about Jacob sheep are you can get all sorts of different colours from them, can't you? You can, yes. And great instructions from Helen Ingram there. That is lovely. Adore that. And then our final sheep, which I'm going to pop onto uh, the plinth. Now our most popular option so far. I had a feeling oh. it might be. You're all going, we like a bad boy. We like a bad boy. Here he is, the original black sheep. <laughs> oh, he is a cutie. He is an absolute cutie. Um, and again, this is the natural colour of the, the yarn. Mm -hmm. Yeah, isn't that lovely? Shown on a good, honest brown teapot. You can't fault a good, honest brown teapot, can you? No. <laughs> Do you think the tea tastes better when it comes out of a teapot? I, I think it probably does, mm. yeah. Better than a tea bag in a tea oh, oh. in, in a teacup, but um. every time, yeah, uh, just absolutely gorgeous. This one, beautiful, beautiful colorway that, and it is our most popular option. Twenty three ninety nine mm -hmm. for the woolly sheep black sheep crochet tea cozy kit, uh, and a much much bigger tea cozy which illustrates the point perfectly, Helen, that you use the pattern as a basis and then you can adapt it depending on whether your teapot is short and round or maybe taller and narrower, you can adapt it. And plenty of yarn for those different yeah. options. Yeah, so there is enough yarn in the kit for what I've put on the pattern is a, a, a three to four cup um, teapot mm -hmm. so probably the the cat here is is probably got a slightly bigger than a three to four uh, cup and I and the wool in the kit will just about stretch for for this size however it, people have got much bigger teapots and and you can buy extra yarn yep. to uh, to then finish off your off your teapot but I wouldn't go I wouldn't start with a, a massive teapot because right. you will run out of yarn and uh, yeah. and be disappointed. But but you um, can see this. I would consider this to be like a family size teapot. Yes, yeah. Or if I'm really crafting hard, an individual teapot yeah. for me. <laughs> yeah. Um, I think I've met um, a, a fellow tea drinker. Yeah. yeah? Yes, definitely. <laughs> Excellent. So you're getting a beautiful hank of that uh, gorgeous. And again, is this this is Jacob too? Yeah. Yeah. This is yeah. Jacob. That lovely, rich, dark blackish brown, loads of different colour variation in there, which creates a lovely subtle mild effect. Uh, you're getting a crochet hook. Remember, you'd probably expect with a DK that you'd use a, a three and a half or a four mil hook, but as Helen explained, you want a denser, tighter fabric to keep your tea insulated. So a three mil hook included, some extra yarn to create the facial features, stuffing for the nose, and the all important, really fantastic, detailed nurturing pattern <laughs> it's nurturing and your style as well when you're teaching on your videos is very nurturing it's very i'm right there with you good i'm glad i think uh, youtube is fantastic for learning um because you can press pause rewind play exactly. again and uh, so i try to make it slow and you know relevant so that people are learning stitches that they want to use whether it is exactly. in a blanket or making something like a tea cozy well it's like what you said on on the video that i was watching you know people come along and, and have a class with you uh -huh. but they all say i want to take you home yes yeah. um i understand why um uh, but you can't no. you can't but you kind of can now uh, because you've got the wonderful pattern um which is very much like having helen in the room with you and then if you need a little bit of extra support if you're brand new to crochet um go onto youtube and watch some of Helen's videos, you'll feel like she's right there in the room with you and when you're making your very own black sheep of the family, or your grey sheep, or your natural. This is definitely in the lead, our most popular option. Did you think it might be? Oh, I can't say because I yeah I love them all and uh, I suppose I do have my favourite, which is the the natural is my favourite because that was the very first crochet pattern design I ever created. No way! So yeah, so about um, nine years ago I, um, I wrote that pattern and it was very much inspired by my love of sheep 
my love of tea uh -huh. and putting the two together kind love of created of and my love of crochet <laughs> yes so um so of course i had to make a, a sheep tea cozy and, and that was my my first and it's become a bit of a sort of iconic uh, woolly chic design yes. really and uh, yeah and so it sort of went on from there so yes that that is my favorite that's the original very first um uh, tea cozy that i ever made and uh, published pattern. So, it's brilliant. Yeah. Well, you love it, we love it, and you love it at home too. Um, your wonderful sheep, woolly chic, natural sheep cozy uh, available. Also, you know, absolutely loving the black sheep version at home. That's our favourite at home, the black sheep. <laughs> and the second most popular actually is the cat. Oh, which well, there we go. There. Yeah. Um, now, you're very kindly going to show us how to crochet a tail. Right, so no, what I'm going to do first is I'm going to show you how to do the loop stitch and also the first stitch. So I'm going to start completely at the basics and show how to, how to start off. I'll do just a couple of rows of, um, a, couple, a few stitches of the loop stitch. So I'm just going to start with a slip knot on my hook and then chain, I'm just going to do a chain of 10. So that's two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. And in the pattern, this is what you would do. You would start with a foundation chain. And then the next row would be a, um, a row of double crochet stitches. Now, in all my patterns, they are UK crochet terms, not American crochet terms. In America, they call a double crochet stitch a single crochet stitch, which gets a bit confusing. But to make a double crochet stitch, you're then going to go into the top loop of, that, of the chain stitch, yarn around the hook and pull it through the loop. You've got two loops on your stitch, on your hook. Nearly called it a stick then. <laughs> pull on it through. Your stick. Yeah, on your stick. Then pull it through both of those so loops I on your it. hook. So, yeah. Put your hook in, yarn around the hook, pull through. You've got two loops on your hook. Pull through those two loops, and that's a double crochet stitch. So, we'll just do that to the end. Now, when you're working loop stitches, the loops will only appear on one side of your fabric. Mm -hmm. So, and as we're working in rows, we need to make sure that one row is loop stitches and then the next row is a double crochet stitch in each, in each stitch. Oh, I understand. So, that, so we've got a so, right side and a wrong yeah, side. So that's fabric. basically the, the, the right side, or is it the wrong side? Yeah, so, so th this, this side is the wrong side because the loops are going to be on the other side. So we'll start with the turning chain of one chain and then exactly the same way as we made our double crochet stitch, we'll put our hook into the stitch under both parts of the V and this is where it differs from a, a double crochet stitch. I'm going to move my finger out to make a loop. My hook goes through the stitch, around and catches both parts of the loop and pulls them through the stitch. I've then got three loops on my hook. Now I've taken my finger out of that loop so it's just hanging down at the back. And then I'm going to go yarn around the hook and pull through all three loops. And that's what finishes off your loop stitch. And you can give that a bit of a tug. And don't worry if your loop stitches that you're making are different sizes. It really doesn't matter. It just adds to the sort of sheepiness of the um, brilliant uh, word. Uh, yeah, the sheepiness of your of your work. So I've decided that's officially the word of the day. Sheepiness. Sheep, sheepiness. Right. So I'll show you again. You put the hook into the stitch. You make a loop with your finger. So you hold your finger out. You put your hook under and around and catch the back part of the of the loop and pull both parts through your stitch. Now it's really important to, to grab both bits of the loop mm -hmm. and pull it through your stitch because if you only pulled one part, it would start to un come undone. Now if you want to adjust the size of your loop, you can give it a tug and make it bigger mm -hmm. or pull it from the ball, from the working yarn and make it smaller mm -hmm. and then finish it off to tighten it up. 
and secure it into place. So there you go, you've got your loops on one side and we'll go to the end and do a few more. So I'm coming round. Helen, I am just, oh, I, I'm glad there isn't a camera on my face right now because I'm just <laughs> sitting here in awe just watching you. It's absolutely, I'm like, it's just <laughs> mesmerising watching you. It's uh, You've really demystified that for me. It is like magic, isn't it? What you can do. You as well. yeah. <laughs> what you can do with a, a ball of wool and uh, a crochet hook and create such a different, you know, different effects yeah. with very simple. This is just a variation on a double crochet stitch just by putting my finger out yep. and around and pulling through the stitch. Yeah, and you're creating the size of the loop with your finger, but as you showed us, you can also adjust the size of that loop by pulling out more or pulling back on the yep. working yarn just to create a smaller or a bigger loop. And then for the, um, so this is the sheepiness. So that's the uh, sheepiness. That so you're creating yep. with loops, but for the cat. So to get the first stitch, you do exactly the same stitch, the same loop stitch, and instead, you just, let me grab a pair of scissors. All you would do is cut the top of those loops and they won't, they won't undo. And so what I was doing with the, with the cat is actually getting a really, uh, a pair of scissors, a really big pair of scissors and just threading them through all the loops and then snipping them at the same time. Yep. And there you've turned your loop stitch into a fur stitch. And then at that point, it really doesn't matter how big your loops were or how uneven your mm -hmm. loops were, mm -hmm. because you're you can then just snip it afterwards. You can give your, you know, not your real cat, but your, your cat tea cozy <laughs> a haircut at the end of it. Although so occasionally I do have to bath my cat. No. Yes. No. Yes. You wouldn't get our cats anywhere <laughs> near the bath. <laughs> Oh, I like to bath all animals. I was bathing goats earlier on in the week. Oh my goodness. Oh yeah, as you do. I can imagine goats might quite like a bath. Yeah, well, uh, Olaf certainly enjoyed his bath. Oh. Olaf the goat. I just, I'm mesmerised, <laughs> Helen. I love it, I love well, it. So, um, so it, you were talking about uh, how to adapt it to any shaped um, teapot. Mm -hmm. Big, small, ra you know, super round, skinny, you know, they all come in different shapes and sizes. I've got a teapot here, which is obviously quite sort of, um, you know, squat in shape. It doesn't have that kind of round top bit to it. So this is a very different shape to the, um, the teapot. And I can't believe that your pattern actually allows me to crochet well, both. Well, it, it, so it is, a, it is a guide. I mean, it does say, it does have the instructions for a generic sort of rounded shape um, teapot mm -hmm. that you could just crochet from the pattern and not have a teapot. However, then you've got to get a teapot that fits it. So, um, so I would say you crochet this with your teapot in front of you and you try it on each time you, uh, each time you do a row. So just looking at um, where you start, you start with a very long chain and you measure that foundation chain around, around the bottom of your teapot. So mm -hmm. you measure to make sure that it, it will fit and stretch. Do you want it to be quite a tight fit, quite you a can, loose fit? You can make it a tight fit because there's, um, and of course, taking a tea cosy on and off of a, a teapot can be tricky if it's all in one piece. So again, I've given in the pattern options for either using a button. So for example, the um, I've got a button here and a button loop, which means that you can take Sorry, move that that way. So you've got a button and a button loop that you can then take it off, and then it means that you can take the uh, the tea cozy off very easily. Fab. Can we wash the tea cozy? Yes. If it should get soaked in. Absolutely. Tea? I would only ever hand wash it mm -hmm. because it is a hundred percent wool, but it it definitely will wash. Do it in sort of um, you know tepid water. Um, you can give it a bit of a scrub and even put it into the um, 
washing machine for on a spin cycle mm -hmm. to spin out any of the excess water and then just pat it and dry it on a towel. So yes, washing is, is not a uh, problem. But if you did put it by accident in your washing machine along with your jeans, yes. it would probably go felted and, and shrink. So yeah. it would change. Then you'd need like a doll's house yeah, teapot. Exactly. I mean, sheep get wet, just not in hot water. They, they, they get cold water, don't they? Yes. Yeah, yeah they get yeah. rained on a lot, especially in <laughs> Wales. Oh, they really do. They really do. Our Welsh mountains don't mind any weather they just stay out in it yes yeah. yeah they're not bothered well that's what they're designed for they are they are so with each of your teapots you then so you make your foundation chain you measure it so that it goes around the bottom then you crochet two at least two rows of double crochet stitches and then you've counted your foundation row so you know how many stitches you started off with and at that point you work to two sides so you're dividing your stitches in half and so you do one half and again m fitting it onto the side of your um, teapot to making sure that it that it fits so with this teapot it comes out quite steeply from the bottom so what I have done is increased straight away so I started off with 56 Yes, 56 um, chain stitches. Mm -hmm. Then I did two rows of 56 double crochet stitches. All in one long line. All in one line. Then I've divided it in half. So if my maths is right, it was 28 stitches. So then All I right. crocheted up to the middle point. But then I've increased at the beginning and end of that very first row. So that very first row then became from 28 stitches to 30 stitches. And then more or less, the, um, the, the sides of, the, of this teapot more or less stay much the same yes. um, shape until you get to the top of your spout and your handle. And at that point, we'll need to join the two sides and start working in the round. Mm -hmm. So then, and again, each teapot will have a different sort of width of handle a different sort of um, shape spout. Yes. And so at this point, you'll need to do chains across the top of your um, of your handle and your spout to make sure that you're joining it. And that increases the length as well. It does, yeah. So your pattern will explain all of that. And so my top tip is just simply to um, keep measuring it on your teapot, increase at the beginning and end of your row when you're working on the sides if your teapot is going out and decrease if it's going in. Now this, this teapot starts to decrease beyond the point of the handle and the spout. So I'm just going to finish to this, finish to the end and then I can show you how, so I'm just going to finish with more loop stitches to the end. How are we doing for time? We're doing, doing right. great. Yes. We're doing great. Um, it's so you really are demystifying this process. Um, flat fabric um, for a start uh, it looks much easier to work on than I thought it was going to be. Uh -huh. um, I can see how dense the fabric is that you're crocheting as well because of using that smaller needle. So it's nice and firm. Yeah. Easy to hold on to. Yeah. Um, and I love the effect of the, the loop stitching, the loop stitches. Is that the right that's name? That's it, yeah. Loop that's stitches. It. It's the just a stitches. gorgeous project. And don't forget, this is Helen's original pattern, <laughs> her oldest pattern. Yes, that's her it. Perennial favourite. <laughs> One of the most popular patterns you've ever Yes, yeah, done. definitely. The sheep tea cozy is uh, I think absolutely my most popular design. Oh, we're loving this. <laughs> we are loving this. And we feel so pleased and happy to have you and your iconic Sheep Tea Cozy pattern. It's gorgeous. Uh, okay, so I've now come to the top of the spout. So now I need to join it to the other side. I've done my, so I've completed both sides. And now at this point, I can see it's not quite going to stretch. So I'm going to do add some chains before joining it onto the other side. Mm -hmm. So I think probably only about three or four chains. One, two, three. And again, you need to make sure that you are working in the same direction. 
so that the loop stitches are all on the outside. See, I'm mm -hmm. getting all tangled up. And it's just worth laying it out and getting it into position. Okay. So this is the point at which you're joining it now into the round? Yes. So I've gone from doing the two sides, which were working in rows, mm -hmm. to now working in the round. And I'm going to go into this first stitch of the second side and make a slip stitch. So that's going into the stitch, yarn around the hook, and pulling through the stitch and the loop that's on my hook. So Got a slip you. stitch is a, a joining stitch. And then I can see that my loops are all on this side, so I can continue with um, making my loops. Now I know that I've got a fairly flat top to this teapot, so I'll need to do some, in some decreasing quite, um, quite quickly into the pattern. So I want to show you how to, to decrease two um, loop stitches together. Oh, yes, so in please. order to do your decrease, you're decreasing two stitches together. So you make the first, so you put your hook into the first stitch, you make your first loop, and you pull that through. And so you've got your three loops of the stitch. You take your finger out of your loop. But before finishing off that stitch, you then go into the next stitch. Again, with your finger out, you go round and you pull through. You've now actually got five loops on your hook. And you're going to go yarn around the hook and pull through all five oh, of what? those stitches. There yeah. you so, go. So yeah, that is pulling two stitches together into one. So you've decreased. And the pattern will tell you how many stitches to do, just plain loop stitches, before you have to do your next decrease. So I'm just going to do here three, three single loop stitches and then I'm going to decrease the next two together. So I'm going to go into the stitch, take the loop through the stitch, move on to the next stitch, make another loop, pull those strands through, yarn around the hook, and then pull through all of those loops that are on Brilliant. my hook. Oh, Helen, you know what? I think because you know I've only done the most basic crochet, I've done granny squares. Brilliant. Um, where you do not need to increase or decrease. And I've always convinced myself that decreasing in crochet would be complicated and hard. Not at all. It's not, is it? No, it's really <laughs> not at all. It's, uh, it's, it's so easy. Yeah. And the, the thing that I like about crochet so much is that it is very flexible. It's, but you can actually make things up as you go along, which is exactly what I'm getting you to do when you're making a tea I'm cozy. I'm surprised I haven't done crochet before. You, you do, and if <laughs> that you, sounds right at my street. And if you make a mistake and you think, actually, I haven't increased enough, to, mm -hmm. it's too snug on my tea cozy, you just pull out a row and do, a, do the next one with increases. And it's only one loop on the hook, it's isn't only it? It's not one 127 stitches. No, so, that, so if that loop falls off of your uh -huh, hook, uh -huh. it really doesn't matter. No. So yes, it's, uh, no, that's, it's so, so easy. You're selling crochet to me. Oh, you, really you have, yes, move what beyond granny using? squares. What's that, sorry? What colour is that that you're, you're doing there? Is that the grey? So this is the grey, and, the, and it, is, it is a different... So in the kit, it's slightly different to the, um, the sample that I brought in today, which is a more of a, a brownie uh, grey. Yep. Um, I'll just grab out, but I didn't get, just to show you. So I didn't actually get a chance to, um, to make up a, a grey sample, but uh, I borrowed that one from a friend who um, had commissioned me to make it for her husband. So I sort of nabbed it back from her. And, uh, but yes, yeah, so the grey is it's that lovely. That is beautiful, isn't and it? And it's so nice to crochet with. It's really soft. And a lot of people think that, uh, that British wool is hard and scratchy. This is beautiful. It's really soft and it's, it's, lovely. it's lovely to work with. It really isn't. Um, I just say, I love the smell as well. Yeah, and if, oh, if people don't like tea or they haven't got a teapot, I have also adapted the um, the design to make a doorstop. So you oh. could quite easily follow the pattern and sew sew up where the handle and the spout would be, and put some you know a, a fabric bag full of sand or beans or rice or yeah. anything and turn it into a doorstop so if you're not a tea lover 
the pattern could be adapted to um, to, to make so, you know make it slightly different, and that's what's so brilliant about handmade and crochet in, in particular is that you can just yeah go a bit freeform, try something oh, different. I love it's, it. Yeah, that's I great. I love it. So even if you don't like tea, what's that all about? I know, I know. Who doesn't um, like but tea? But if you have doors. Um, then you can turn uh, Helen's incredible <laughs> sheep tea cozies, or indeed the Christmas pudding, or the hearts and flowers, um, into a doorstop. Yeah. A brilliant idea. Yeah. Brilliant yeah. idea. And we actually we have um, recycled plastic pellets on the website that you could use to oh. fill, especially the bottom of this, so Perfect. that it's sat nicely on the ground and they're so recycled. So that would be too. good. Yeah, yeah, that's good. This is a super one. Love this. Um, you, you said at the start that this is um, very beginner friendly. Yes. So so with the hearts and flowers um, tea cosy and the Christmas pudding tea cosy, you don't have to do the loop stitch. You're just doing a double crochet stitch. So you, in, you work it in exactly the same way as I've described from the bottom, mm -hmm. measuring you around your teapot. You do the two sides. You join above the spout and the handle and then you're working in the round. So decreasing in exactly the same way as I've just demonstrated. Um, and then you can join it with a, a, a loop um, just made out of chains and so on a button. So yeah, so I could, um, I have, oh, in one of the earlier Yarn Lane TV shows, I demonstrated how to make the hearts and the hearts are made um, using the amigurumi technique of um, just working in spirals. So oh, okay. from the bottom and spirals, it's a bit fiddly with the hearts, but once you can do, once you've mastered that double crochet stitch, it's it's very straightforward. And also because you're just working on one small thing at a time, you can, the first one, you can have a go, pull it out, have another go until you get it right, can't you? Yes. It's not a massive yeah. thing that no. you... I love it. I love it. You, honestly, <laughs> Helen, you've really demystified crochet for me this morning. What about you at home? I bet you know how to crochet at home already, don't you? <laughs> um, but hasn't Helen done an amazing job at showing us how approachable, how adaptable and how you can change the shape easily um, of your tea cosy to fit any size uh, teapot? I also love the fact, Helen, that everything is in the bag. Um, you've got everything you need. Um, it's just fab. Um, now then, uh, do you I, have anything else to show yeah, us? Yes, shall, shall I just mention the, the cat's tail? Please. Because obviously the cat needs a tail. Um, so this is made in um, two colours. And you start, so I've just started with a chain. And then you're working in rounds around that chain. So I've just come to the, um, the end of one round. So I made a foundation chain and then I worked double crochet stitches into that chain. Then I went round to the back of the chain and worked a row of, of loop stitches. But now I'm coming along the other side to add the... Um, yeah, so I'll just get into the right position. So I need to... Now I'm confusing myself. Right, so yes, it's actually... Um, I'm working along this side, making loop stitches in white for the tip of the tail so again in exactly the same way putting my hook in making the loop with my finger stuck out catching both parts of the loop and pulling it through and finishing off the stitch so you you leave your different colors of yarn attached mm -hmm. and when you're moving and I'll get to that point as quick as I can and I'll swap over from the white to the black. Mm -hmm. And of course, remember, if you're making, if you've got a black and white cat, but it's got um, a white splodge in the middle of its tail, I imagine it'd be quite easy just yes. to put it there. Yes, that's it. So you would just kind of work out on your foundation chain where you wanted your white to be, mm -hmm. and then you would change it. So I'm coming up to my last stitch here, and I'm just gonna go in and make my loop and pull that through. But then I'm going to move on to the black, sort of untwizzle my yarn, and finish off that stitch with the black yarn, and then I'm ready to move on to the next stitch. 
And does in that black. sort of lock the yarn um, when you're changing colours? Well, it doesn't really, it's not like knitting. When you're doing intarsia or, or fair isle, you kind of have to sort of wrap your yarn around. You knew what I was thinking. Yes, there, yeah. yeah. It's, it, it doesn't work quite that way with, with crochet, but it does just make it neat. And it means that it's um, the, the Vs of the stitches mm -hmm. are where you want them to be. So the gotcha. colour of the Vs, because they are all, all lying over to the left. Now, obviously, I'm right-handed. And if you are a left-handed crocheter, you'd be working in the opposite direction and your stitches would be facing um, a different way. Understood. So even changing colour doesn't look difficult at all. No, no. Changing colour is very straightforward. It's and just, just that last little part of the stitch, isn't it, where you're locking the loop into place? Yes, you yeah. You just switch, switch colours at that point. No, that's right. And then, um, so you're finishing off your stitch with the new colour. So then what I will do is um, crochet all the loop stitches all the way along and then come round the side crocheting along the other side so I'm working in rounds coming along the side of these double crochet stitches mm -hmm. with loop stitches and then when I get to the white that's when I need to just make sure that my yarn comes over the top so that it's hidden inside the tail and then you can be working on that side Understood. so that's my that's my only sort of tip there in terms of changing color and then once you've gone round, I think it is uh, two or three times, the, the tail sort of curls together and you can sew it along the inside and then you're ready to sew it onto your, um, onto your teapot. And that cat shall have a tail. It will have a tail, oh, yeah. Oh, Helen, I feel like I want to ask you to send me a picture so I can be reassured. Yeah, I will finish I it off, it. I promise, I will. <laughs> <laughs> so cute. I've had just a wonderful hour with you, Helen. I've so enjoyed it's it. It's been really Thanks lovely. For coming yeah. in. Yeah, thank you. I want to come and do a crochet class with you now. Yes, please. you must come to Hitchin and I will. Uh, and do do a workshop with me. I really like be brilliant. that. I've really liked that. If you've never crocheted before, I'll talk mm -hmm. about a demystification hour. Um, if you've experienced in crochet but have learned some new stitches today, some new techniques from the wonderful Helen Ingram. Thank you so much. Thank you. <laughs> now, don't forget if you buy any of our kits today. They will come straight from Helen and you've got everything in your kit, including that lovely calico bag to keep everything in, your crochet hook is included, full instructions, all the yarn and that recycled uh, stuffing that you can use in your, in your pattern as well. Um, don't forget uh, that the minute you get home, that you get it home, you can make a start. There's nothing else to add. And uh, if you need a little bit of extra tutorial, don't forget Helen's got her YouTube channel that you can watch videos showing all those basics. Um, do please remember to put pictures of your finished makes on the Yarn Lane fans page. We love to see what you've made, and uh, I know that Helen will enjoy seeing those pictures too. Now, our most popular kit is still the Black Sheep. And I told you, you love a bad boy. Um, very, very closely followed now by the Grey. And also very limited stocks on both of these kits. So do check out, won't you, if you've got either the Black or the Grey in your shopping baskets right now. In fact, if you've got anything in your shopping basket, do check out uh, so that you know that you've secured your kit from Woolly Chic. I've just had the best hour. Don't forget as well, we've got that lovely Christmas pudding and the hearts and flowers, the cat too, and um, Helen's original natural sheep. Um, just lovely. Now you can order by calling the call center, um, Yarn Lane call center. It's completely free to call, um, UK based, really friendly. I called them this morning and had a chat with them. Uh, terrific people there. Uh, you can also order on the website www.yarnlane.com. Um, just watch live, click on watch live and scroll down. There he is, the black sheep, our best seller. Really clear which one's which. You just pick the colour of sheep or the cat, the Christmas pudding or the hearts and flowers. Now, Yarn Lane will be back on Friday uh, with crochet blankets. Love a crochet blanket.
Uh, we will see you there. Uh, you'll have Rebecca Reed with you that day. But thank you so much for joining me and Helen Ingram for this wonderful hour here on Yarn Lane. Look forward to welcoming you to the gang again. We'll see you next time. Take care of yourselves. <laughs>